The Sesh Podcast, episode 162, take one. Hello, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh, episode 162. I am Kendall. I am Janelle, and Uh, we are what? You're about to say something else. I was going to say, I'm happy to be back. Well, you this know, is my first episode we're of the year. happy to have you here, honey. I've been missing y'all's, honey. We're also joined by our producers, Corelli and Sydney. It's Welcome, us. ladies. It's Welcome. you. Hey. Hey. What's up? It's you. You threw me off because you said the episode number, which we never do here. Oh, yeah. you're right. I feel but a little okay. disoriented. I'm rusty. I just come okay. up with things as I go. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's fine. <laughs> y'all took some time off now we're back yes yes i missed you guys so much last week but of course i watched the episode that's and had hilarious FOMO. to me why is it funny i don't know why wouldn't i want to watch my besties do an episode that's really sweet it's fun it's like hanging out with you guys and i want to know what you've missed and i listened True. to your ins and outs and i loved that segment okay so i i felt excluded so i made my own ins, good ins and outs we want to hear I them share them today i was wondering what yours were honestly well i, I love that new trend ins and outs we had a birthday party for my dad's sister and Danny from Lights Out. Their birthdays all fall together, which is really crazy. Danny and Annalie are dating, if you didn't know. Wait, did you and say your dad's sister? I said my sister and my dad. Oh, oh okay. My Hello? sister's birthday first, then it's my dad's, yeah, then it's Danny. Right, 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 right. But what's weird is Danny and Annalie were born yeah, three so days weird. apart, and they were born in the same hospital and were probably there at the same time. That is so weird. Because we've done the math and we, we think that they could have even have been in the little like baby nursery together. What if they were together and they could have nursery? wheeled them by each other and they're like, hey, see you in 18 years. Well, yeah. Or 16 years. That's very bizarre. I know. To be honest. Yep. Yep. Same hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember where I was going with that. But yeah, it was their birthday this weekend. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, you were going with. Oh, I asked them what oh, their ins and outs were. For their oh, they for have, their new year, and they have the ins and outs too. Yeah, they had some things. Okay, my dad's love- in is n- more Pilates. My dad's a big Pilates man. Oh, I know, <laughs> more Pilates though, okay. and more reading. More reading. I know. I, I want to try Pilates. I've heard it's really, really hard. I want to try hard. reading. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Sam. I'm like, I've oh, can't hard. relate, Dad. <laughs> can't relate. I'll be listening to right, all of my right. audiobooks. <laughs> anyway, I would love to try Pilates. It looks really hard though. Yeah, you guys did a great episode. It was Thanks. always fun to watch. I love how you guys had Carly and Sydney come down and join. Charlie just, just fall. fall? Bud. Come here, pal. He just fell off the couch. It's oh, fine. Now he's embarrassed. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, he's just shaking oh, he's, it off. He's shaking it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shake it off. You're good. All right. Okay. But yes, it was fun having them join the table. Yeah, that was, Felt uh, that was a little a really less nice alone. touch. I like that. Should do that in the future. It Very was good. fun. You guys did nice. great. I liked it. Thank you. Yeah. I think you were both pretty a little nervous for it, but at first yeah yeah, it is hard to get used to the lights and all the cameras it's like where do you look and yeah yeah. i've gotten so used to it i like forget they're there but anyway yeah thanks for covering for me i was in arizona freezing your nuts off it was pretty cold it was crazy the first half of the trip wasn't bad but of course you think arizona the desert it's gonna be super warm yeah i packed so wrong first day we had to go to target and get holly a bunch of warm clothes sweaters I thought Arizona was hot and I did too. always hot well, in January. Confused. It was, I mean, they were like freaking out down there too. Yes. Everyone we were talking to is like, drive safe out there. People get crazy <laughs> in these winter storms. <laughs> it was just rain. But it was like in the 40s yeah. over the weekend. Yeah, we did have cold. a few days of sun. Um, we, My favorite, my highlight of the trip was going to the zoo down there, which is the largest nonprofit zoo in that the country. So cool. It was so cool. And we actually met a, a fan. She oh, worked at the zoo and oh, she was really? she was so nice. So shout out to you. Anyway, let's get into things. Let's go. A, should I start with ins and outs? Um or do you guys have any interesting updates? No, nothing happened. Maggie's no. butthole's doing better for anyone who cares. Oh yeah, I heard the whole segment on that. Um I had Buffalo Wild Wings again yesterday. You did. That was very ballsy. So of you. far. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> but not perfect either. So now I'm getting really? sus. Oh no! Maybe it's just you that saw what ha- you heard what happened to me about an hour and a half ago. That's yeah, I'm gonna say. Uh, yeah, I did. But leave it at that. Maybe it was the BB Dubs. But I'm gonna have it for lunch. I brought it for lunch. So oh my god, you're really living life on the edge, dude. What did I say? BB Dubs. B yeah. BB Dubs. B W W. Right. B W W W W dot. 
What do you guys, what do you guys call it? Because B-dubs. Okay. What we do call you call it? it? Buffs. 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 Yeah. Let's go to Buffs. Mm, Buffalo. That's how you call it in Pueblo. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. But other than that, I have nothing to report. It's cold as shit here in Colorado. It's cold across the country. Yes. Leave Amazing. us a comment of your temperature. <laughs> Dude, it's yeah. negative six right now. Great. Where are Fahrenheit. you? What's the weather today? We would love to hear. Cold. Unless you're in like Australia and it's summertime there. True that. My uh, stepbrother just got back from six weeks in New Zealand. Oh, he's already home. He's home. And he got extremely ill uh, coming back. He was throwing up all over on the flight. Then he had to go to the ER because he had 103 degree fever. And they think he like drank some bad water or something. Oh, God. So he's got like a bacterial thing. So he'd be shitting and throwing up. Poor dude. On Six weeks in New Zealand, the US. though. That's badass. So glad they did that. I Once know. in a lifetime. I know. Looks fun. He used to live in New Zealand for a while. He was born in so. New Zealand. Yep. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. So he's a dual citizen. Mm-hmm. Um, is, yeah. this, is this your flight attend, uh, flight attendant? It is brother? not. It is his, yeah, his brother. His younger brother. But they oh, both okay. lived in New Zealand at one point. Yes, they did. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, Janelle's stepmom always makes this amazing New Zealand dessert called Pavlova. She hasn't Pavlova. made it in years, though. I'm kind of pissed. I know. It's been a long time I since I've got Pavlova. New Year's, <gasps> or for Christmas Eve, and my dad said, no. And I said, <laughs> all right. <laughs> no no Christmas miracle. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, Pavlova is so good. If you guys have never had it, you should make it. It's not that hard. It's just like egg whites and sugar, kind of. It's kind of like meringue. Yeah, kind of like meringue, but way better. It's like really crunchy on the inside and, outside and chewy on the inside. And then you put like berries and whipped cream. Damn, it's so good. Damn, this looks so good. Dude, make it. it's so Curly good. I can oh probably figure out how to make it. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah, I can figure out how to make anything. Yeah, Curly's actually really good at like I everything. I heard about the tamales too. I had no idea the process of making a tamale. Oh, that was dude. interesting to listen to. Yeah, they to. were, uh, yeah, no, that was, it was fun. Um, my mom told me that I cannot, I can never give the recipe though. Because mm. oh. she's like, this is a family, Damn. A family affair. Hey, I get that. And I'm like, That's okay. my grandma was. Yeah. Our friends at Balesa are literally sending out free vibrators and gift cards for vibrators to everyone who signs up for their giveaway. Balesa's mission is to empower everyone to embrace, explore, and celebrate their sexuality. Balesa has the biggest selection of toys you could imagine if you're trying to spice things up in the bedroom, maybe with a partner, or maybe just with yourself. Especially with Valentine's Day coming up, Balesa is your go-to spot for all things sex toys. I wanted to highlight a few of them specifically today. One of them is the pebble. This little guy is tiny but mighty, okay? It's got suction and vibration controlled independently. It's ergonomically built to fit perfectly in your hand. And best of all, there's no annoying pattern modes. Or how about their Air Vibe, which is dual simulation, G-spot, and clit stimulation. Everything at once, baby, okay? It comes in the most discreet casing. It's waterproof, it's rechargeable, and silent, but deadly. There's also the Demi Wand, which works for all body types, because orgasms are for everyone. They have an innovative design, and they're whisper quiet, they're compact, discreet, and comes in a cute as heck charging case. Again, 100% waterproof and USB rechargeable, and it has a flexible neck that allows you to get just the right angle and pressure you're after. Or maybe you're looking for a toy that does it all, vibrates, suctions, and thumps. Well, that is where their thump comes in. The thump utilizes Balesa's improved pleasure jet technology, and true feel vibrations naturally complement the suction at its targeted base. And it has innovative thump technology for natural clitoral palpitations on the back of the pop grip. All of their products are super good quality, and like I said, their selection is truly unmatched. So again, get some free toys or gift cards for toys. Everyone who signs up for the giveaway with Balesa wins something, and that link will be in the description box. Be sure to check it out. You have nothing to lose, only to gain. But anyway, but yeah, um, can I do some in, ins and outs? Hit us. I'd love to, hit us, to share. Damn, I um put some of my outs in my ins list because this makes no sense. <laughs> so I had a lot of the same ones as you guys. Uh, definitely, I feel like they're very common for lots of people. Right. Some of these. Uh, one of my ends is being more present in the moment, which of course I said this every year. Right. Same. That's like one of the hardest things to do in life, I think. Totally. Yeah. Because you're either well, you're always like thinking about the future, mm-hmm. or you're like think trying overanalyzing the past to some degree. Yes. For me, it's a lot of the future concerns. And one of the things I put as my out is obsessing over my calendar. I get really crazy about my calendar to the point where I am scheduling like when I'm going to do my laundry and really? it's like yeah it's like out of control like I have calendar events for like laundry 
on this day and my work, I like schedule my workouts and like the times and I spend so much time on my calendar app obsessing over not only the coming week, but weeks to come and months to come. Do you get like, like a year mad out. when you don't meet a yeah. deadline? Yeah. It sounds stressful. Yeah, I'm was... like, and I stress Josh out because I'm like, oh, on the calendar today, we have this, this, we need to do this by this time. And like, I've gotten <laughs> kind of crazy with it. And so I've been working with my therapist on like, sometimes things do not go as planned and that's okay. True and that. not everything's perfect. I need to to let go of trying to make everything be perfect all the time. So that's that was a, a big thing. one for me. Yeah. That's hard. In is saying no and not just saying no, but not feeling guilty about it because guilt is one of the things I struggle with most in life is I feel guilty about everything all the time. I always feel like I'm not doing enough and I find myself compromising my own happiness for others because I don't want to deal with the guilt. You know, I don't like I get like guilt tripped into things and um, another one I put in is prioritizing what's best for me and my family and and my child above all else. So if something is going to interfere with her nap, I'm saying no. And that's just that. Or like interfering with okay. her schedule or what's best for her. Like she needs to be, which I've always done, but I feel guilty about it. So it's getting rid of the guilt sure. that comes along with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I put in, in is mobile games. <laughs> <laughs> I am become a gamer, you guys. I'm a big gamer. No, literally. I love mobile games. It's been so good. I'm telling you, they have this been is, good for my way, mental health. We are not sponsored by mobile game on the show. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. I hope to <laughs> because I'm a big fan. But Kendall is truly a fan. Because it's allowed me to get to one of my outs, which is the doom scrolling, the social media scrolling, the mindless Amen. scrolling. Amen sister i have done i am really proud of myself in the month of december i limited myself to 10 minutes or less a day on all of these social media apps including tiktok that's good wow i guess i can't count youtube because i do listen to youtube throughout the day but the scrolling going through people's stories like i'll post but then i'm out yeah. i'm not reading things i'm not Check in DMs, which I do feel bad because sometimes I don't respond to my friends for like weeks. And that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like off the social media and it has been so, so good for me. But just like you were saying that you were going to replace your social media time with reality TV, <laughs> which I fully support. I feel I think that is a better use of your time. Is it, though? I think it is. I okay. think so. Thank I have you. replaced it with mobile games and TV at the same time, though. That is a good combo. Mm -hmm. Having like the TV and then the mobile game going. Yep. Yep. Which, by the way, I watched a ton of Sister Wives over this break. I'm like, I think I'm on season six. Wow, I'm going through I'm the so whole. Confused. I'm going to go oh. through the whole thing. But you already watched all of it. Yeah, but I mean, I started in high school, so I had oh, forgotten. Okay, I mean, you guys knew during my presentation. I was like, ma I missed you a ton missed of things. It. People and now were I'm pissed. like, God, I should have just. Well, I didn't have time to watch the whole thing before that. No, what? But I may have to do like a a remodel of the presentation. I loved your presentation. I thought Thank it was you. very informative. I, I understood it. it for the most part. For the most part, I was pretty yeah. dead on. Yeah. There were so many things I forgot about and it made me see some of them differently. I do don't you have know. Any differing opinions? Um, do you still not like Robin? Robin. Thank no, you. No, I've developed a little. I don't. Mm, <laughs> I got to be careful with what I say because people fucking hate Robin. <laughs> but like in the early days, I think she had better intentions and she did. She did offer to try to have a baby for Mary at one point. Remember I told oh, you Mary, yes. was, she tried to be her surrogate and oh, offered that to her. That's sweet. And, well, it was kind of sweet. I feel like over time she was, she went Down. well, downhill. Oh, well, I also feel, because I mean, I we were talking about it. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, the way, the way that, that uh, Cody treats her so different, like it's night crazy. and day. Yeah. Like, mm. he, like she's his favorite. And like, more so over time. She's the yeah. newest model right. by a long shot. I, model. <laughs> damn the newest like model of wife, of wife oh, what I'm saying. right 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 oh <laughs> yes. oh oh i was like Upgrade. the yeah. youngest the model. latest model mm -hmm. yeah no that that shows and i haven't gotten the very far i think i've gotten to like season two three three i think yeah um like they moved into the cul-de-sac house yep um that's where i'm at too oh wait no no they're no. still in the cul-de-sac no in vegas they haven't they're in vegas they're not in the cul-de-sac yet they're building the cul-de-sac houses okay no i'm, <laughs> I'm right before that i just watched where mary got catfished and it made me feel more bad for Mary. It was pretty dumb, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a, she thought it was a guy and it was a woman 
who was trying to extort her and like Ow. take them down. Technology was threatening her. Oh, and she shit. Family Gee. is a big old thing. Mm. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting to watch. Okay, um, so scrolling's out. TV sister Cody sister Brown was in. And, yeah, Cody You've Brown. You've moved town. to Cody Brown Town. Yes. You're now a resident. Yeah. Permanent resident. Um, let's see. So more ins. Uh going with the flow more. Uh kind of goes with the calendar thing, just like accepting what is and not obsessing over things when they don't go exactly how I want. Um big thing for me is continuing to get stronger and healthier. And I also put down running, which is a goal that I don't know if I will be able to complete, but um I do the treadmill three yeah. or four times a week now, that's, and I've been true. trying to add in a minute of running. Hey, that's <laughs> better than I'm doing. I die, though, dude. I'm just like, that minute's the longest minute of my life. <laughs> I don't my get boobs. how people do it. Me either. And I'm, I'm not getting that, like, rush Runner's from high. it. No. That doesn't exist. I feel like I'm going to throw up. No. And pass out. But it cranks my Peloton score up a lot when I just add one minute. Like, it really boosts me, and so I've been crushing my scores which have gotten really into I was my scores. Say, that sounds like another obsession now. <laughs> yeah, so that's on my outs is like, I need to chill on that Got shit. It. Um, <laughs> <laughs> more healthy foods. Um, I've made a lot of really great changes to what I'm eating over the last year, but I need to incorporate more uh, nutrients. So lentils. I, I put lentils down because I have What's recently <laughs> been into lentils as well. Yeah. Um, they're so good, especially I really like black lentils mm. um, and pumpkin seeds. I've been trying Ooh. to eat more pumpkin seeds and really it's supposed to be really good for your skin and collagen. I don't know. <laughs> I do not believe <laughs> collagen's fake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was drinking this coffee and it has collagen in it. And I was like, is collagen even a real thing? I feel like it's a little overhyped. But like, are you drinking your collagen? Pumpkin, uh, pumpkin seeds. They're supposed to be really good for your skin, and I've been working on clearing the skin. So I'm trying to on eat a them. skin journey. Yeah, we have, and we're we're really doing good on it's it. Best it's been in years. You're, yeah, I'll both your skins look great. Yeah. Yeah. Our you. skin is always synced. We'll go through moments of clear, and then we have moments where we're both just no, like, dude. <laughs> you guys don't see it really because we're in front of ring lights and yeah. studio lighting, so it makes you look like you have good skin. But yeah, and we also have makeup on, but. There's some months last year that was yeah, fucking we were very de- really very bad. Yeah, it was like rough. both of our skin was really bad, mm-hmm. and we were both like, "Well, guess this is just our fate." <laughs> then it started clearing up. Yep, yep. And I've been like so on the skincare regimen. So that's something I want to continue this year is like nightly red light therapy, and every other night I'm doing the high frequency wand, and just like not skipping SPF, not skipping washing my face in the morning. I'm really guilty of. I just like completely skip it. in the morning. Yeah, I've been trying to actually wash it and then like use my treatments in the morning. I think it dries my skin out if I like use soap really? in the morning. So you just, just like kind of rinse it off. That's the thing is skincare is just so different yeah, for everyone. Totally. You have to like figure out what's best for you. But yeah, I put more veggies, more greens. I'm really bad with green veggies. I'm just, I only like cucumbers and there's not that much in there, you know? like Mostly water. I can't do broccoli. I hate broccoli mm. but i'm trying to get more like, like green zucchini? beans and asparagus you and like, zucchini you like brussels yeah. sprouts no oh, I love brussels sprouts. Mm. i'm not a big artichoke person either unless they're like loaded with cheese and cauliflower yeah. i hate cauliflower oh. all the carfurnius <laughs> yes the car is that what it it's yeah. like broccoli cauliflower that's a fun carfurnius word. veggies carfurnius. so i take a supplement that a for that fun word to say carfurnius. carfurnius i don't like any of those fuckers i'll be so. saying that a lot i love a good carfurnius food also i put in is therapy and prioritizing therapy i started therapy about two months ago and it has been amazing for me um my mental health has we stand therapy yeah it's been it's been real good so committing to that and trying not to like just stop which i'm guilty of and i have taken two weeks off at the beginning of the year and I'm okay like, i need to schedule one get back on it um going to the dentist I completely skipped dentist last year okay. altogether. I don't think I've been in a year and a half. Okay. So I need to go to the dentist in the next month. It's going to be a pain in the ass. It is. I'll just say that. I'm just like, uh, if there's a cavity, I don't want to know about it. That's, <laughs> I should have added that to my list. Like, seriously. Another thing I put in is finishing my tattoo. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> my tattoo has been in progress for, one. what, four or five years now. My last session was so painful and I had an anxiety attack during it and I never went back. 
but I love tattoos and I want to turn this into a full half sleeve. I mean, that was it looks my plan great for it. as it is, but I know you've been talking about it for so long. Well, you can long. see right here like how oh, it's yeah. not done. Yeah, you're right. It's not finished and I just kind of like completely gave up on it. Yeah. So that's my goal. <laughs> Dude, um, that looks sick as a half sleeve though. Yeah. Or just I want more tattoos Do you more flowers? Too. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to meet with an artist and have them come up with some sure. ideas and I need to find a good tattoo artist too. So that's... Will you add That's color to thing. it or keep it no, black? No, I'm, I'm into black and white. I, I love like how color looks on other people, but... I love, like, watercolor tattoos. Those are sick. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'd ever get a color tattoo, though. I'm, I just think I would get, I think I'd get like, it. sick of it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do... How I love how they look on other people. So maybe. It's not completely out. One of my ins is focusing on what is. And my first out is what ifs, if. which you also had as well. It's been a what problem for a long will time. Kill you, man, I tell you. Dude, I am focusing on what if things happen 60 years from now. Like, I am crazy about it. So annoying. It's so out of control. So that's that was a good one from my therapist. That's a good one. It's focus on the what is, not the what if. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly trying to remind myself of that. I don't see how people can just like, some people just don't what if things. I know. I was talking to my mom. She's like, eh, if I start getting worried, like, She's like, I just go like read a book or like watch TV and then I don't think about it anymore. I'm like, oh, that is a true nice. skill. <laughs> I am jealous. Don will straight up be like, oh, I don't what I don't think about what if because I can't control it. So it doesn't matter. Josh says a lot of that. I'm too. like, what do you mean? What do you mean? You can't. I know you can't control it, but don't you still think about it? He's like, no, he's like, I'll worry about it when it when it needs to be worried about. Like, See, that's what that's just like overall my goal for the year is to stop trying to focus so much on what's going to happen that's out of my control totally. and trying to control it. So I'm such a control freak. Yeah. So trying to plan everything out to the, you know, like it's just insane. I need to get off the calendar app. I mean, healthy planning in yeah. a good way, obviously, but not like obsessive. What if this doesn't work? And then I, uh, I need to just I get crazy about it. So um I put on my what outs the punishment mindset. Um, one of the big things for me in the past year, big theme has been weight loss. And this is something that I haven't talked a lot about on the internet mm -hmm. for a year. I used to talk about it a lot mm -hmm. and I really became closed off with it. I have struggled with body image and eating disorders for a long time. Mm -hmm. And as much as I liked to say that those were like far in the past for me, they they come up like even in the last year of like kind of battling those things. And this was an interesting year for me because I, after my daughter was born, I decided I wanted to go on a weight loss journey. And that's always been something where I'm worried it's going to really tank my mental health because in the past I've had this pattern where I'll start something and then it, does, it doesn't work for me or it doesn't go fast enough. And then I start punishing myself uh, physically, mentally, yeah. all the things. And then I give up on it and I rebel and I go completely the other way and um, so I did a really good job most of the year of focusing on it for health and not focusing on the number on the scale. And I did lose, I've lost 55 pounds since my daughter was born and I'm really proud of that. But then <laughs> towards the end of the year, I started to get really in a negative headspace about it and very much like punishing myself if the scale wasn't moving fast enough. And I've kind of plateaued in December. So I started thinking like, are the are the workouts even worth it mm -hmm. or or like going insane with the workouts to where I'm like I have to beat my Peloton record every single time where it's a failed workout Aww. and I need to like switch back to keeping that healthy mindset um, of I'm doing this for my health and to feel better because it's also really helped my mental sure. health yeah um, I want to focus on getting stronger and increasing stamina and endorphins and stop with the scale which a long time ago, a therapist was like, you need to throw the scale out. And I brought it back. Probably shouldn't have. Um, but at the same time, I do like to kind of, because then it felt good most of the year sure. when I was losing. I feel like it's a double edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like a lot of that was baby weight, like half of it. But um, I'm the lowest I've been since freshman year of college. Congrats, so, Ken. Thank you. I'm really, I've worked really hard you and I'm proud of hard. it. And it's it's been not only good for my self-esteem, but also, yeah, like I said, my mental health. Um, moving your body is just, it makes such a big difference. That's what they say. <sighs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. I need to fucking do that. You can do it. And I love that you're like thinking about uh, Fitness Marshall because yes. I love Fitness Marshall. 
It is fun. And that's another thing I need to do is get off of my like same routine. I, sure. have, I do my weightlifting and then I go to the treadmill and I do the same same thing every I'm time. I'm so inspired that you've been so consistent with it. Like you went hard last year with Thank the, you. Like just being more active in general. I and finally got the like the high of it where I was like, I need to do this or I feel like shit. I want that to happen to me. It took probably three months for me to get there. But it, once you do, it's so worth it. Everyone, off, clearly, it's worth it because everyone who experiences it is like, it's yeah, it sucks to get there, but then it's like yeah. amazing afterwards. Like on vacation, I didn't work out at all and I came home and I missed it and I couldn't wait to get back to it. My first couple workouts, I felt this like, it's like high. I don't know how to explain it. I really it. want that. You can get there. It's hard to start. It's just like... Not, I think it's all about not setting yourself up for failure, like not starting with these ridiculous goals. Start with like, I want to do like five minutes. I saw, yeah, that's actually really interesting you said that because I saw this thing online that was like, if you want to do something, anything, it doesn't mean be working out, it can be literally whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If you can do it for five minutes a day, like mm -hmm. it's the, you're more likely to keep going and doing it more than five minutes because you're already doing it. It's the like yes. daunting thing of like, oh, well, I have to like, dedicate a whole hour and then if it yep if i don't do it every day then i'm a failure if i don't do it for an, this x amount of time then i'm a failure like if you could do it for five minutes a day, tell yourself that's all you have to do is five minutes and then yep you know typically when you're already doing it for five minutes you're like well i'm already here i might as well keep going that's exactly what it is and i think it's about start like making the goals as small as possible and working your way up because yeah. i think so many people and i have always had that problem with weight loss and fitness journeys yeah is I set, I'm like, okay, I'm going to hit the ground like fucking hard. And I start these like crazy diets, like almost crash diets overnight sure. versus like making like one small tweak a week and just working on it. And yeah, starting, uh, you know, like when I first started lifting, cause I hadn't lift, I hadn't done lift weightlifting since I think high school. I don't think I've ever done weightlifting in my life. Yeah, I mean, even then I wasn't like a weightlifter. I was like at dance practice. They'd have like little. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was so weak. And this year I lifted. I couldn't believe it because my tonal gives you how many pounds you lift. I lifted 700 something thousand pounds. Damn. Which they damn. said was an equivalent to a Boeing 747. Or maybe so it was 500,000. Like, I don't remember since exactly. Since you started since doing I, it? Yeah. So in a, in a year. Damn. That's fucking cool. I know. And I think I am getting stronger because sure you and are. It, they show you like your because it, it weight lifts the weight for you. Uh -huh. um, doesn't lift it, but it like changes. Yeah. The, so I, I know it's going up. So it's like it's just working at it slowly, but surely. And I got to get out of the mindset of like, I have to do this. I have to lift 10,000 pounds per time or I'm failing it. Like some yeah. days I can't do it. Right. And that's OK. And it doesn't mean you're a fail just because no. or even days where you didn't do it at all. Right. It's like, okay, well, that's not a total waste. No, no. It's and like this it's very like all or nothing mentality. For your body, right. Definitely. That's really interesting. Definitely. I also, there's a great book. I'm trying to remember what it's called. I listened to it at the beginning of the year when I started all this. Um, I just wanted to recommend it to you. Just give me one Freaking second. body image, man. I'm dealing the with like, my existence. And I still feel shitty about myself. Like I even think after everyone the, does to an extent. Yeah. I'm dealing with body image problems in a way that i've never dealt with it and i'm like the fuck <laughs> it's so hard and i think yeah. every human has to deal with that at some point like and there's things about me that i know that i'll never be able to change and i obsess over them and i get so down and like loose skin and stretch marks yeah. and like after i had my baby I have a lot of loose skin after yeah. losing a lot of weight and it's hard you know it's like even though I've made all this progress, I still look at myself and I'm like unhappy. Yeah. And I don't, I want to like change that. Yeah, so that's, that's sad. I'm just trying to shift my mindset, which is not an easy thing to no. do overnight, but I'm going to try to, you know, work towards it. But this book is called um, Atomic Habits by James oh. Clear. Oh, yeah. Um, it's only five hours to listen to on Audible. And it really helped me build this, these habits in the last year. Yeah, I've heard that's a really good one. Yep. 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 So no more punishment mindset. No more like, because I've not lost any weight this week, I need to do 80 minutes in sure. the gym this week. You know, like if I want to, I can, but the, the like guilt over it and the shame around like, you know, you know, obviously over the holidays, I gained some weight with all the treats. Yeah. And I felt really shitty about that. And I was like, why? It's the holidays. You should. Like, I love it. No, I, it's, yeah. It's, it's okay. weird because I've, <clears throat> sorry. 
That's <laughs> louder. <laughs> mm, that's not, that looks so good. I'm drinking Clamato. Uh, all of them are drinking Clamato. Cheers, two ladies. Cheers. 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 It's just bitches. it's just Clamato. Yep. Yeah. No, they're <laughs> yeah. Shopping Clamato. But yeah. Um. Yeah, I've always been very thin and underweight, and now I I gained weight for the first time in 15 years um over like the last year or so and i thought because i always thought like i look in the mirror and be like oh my god i'm like i i always felt like i looked like a 12 year old like i was yeah super super scrawny i know that's had no curves for you but then i gained weight and i always told myself like i want to gain weight i want to have more curves and more figure to myself so then I gained weight and started experiencing that. And now instead of like allowing myself to be happy, I'm like, oh God. Like for the first time in my life, I've looked I look in the mirror and I'm like, you look kind of fat. Like, what's going on? And I'm and then I'm like, why are you saying that to yourself? You wouldn't say that to someone yeah. else. And also you wanted this. And also it's healthy. I needed to gain weight. My doctor was like, dude, you gotta fucking eat more because or something. Cause it's like it's you were underweight and not like it was getting dangerous or whatever. And now that I've gained weight, I sometimes I like say bad things to myself or like, well, like have kind of sketchy habits. And I'm over here like, yeah, why are you doing that? Hey, it's something that I think literally every human experiences. Yeah. And I I mean, is anyone ever completely satisfied with themselves? Probably not. You see people that end up getting plastic. Sur- I've watched a lot of this um, channel. I think it's called Barcroft, but it, they fo- they do a lot of episodes on people who get tons of plastic yeah. surgery and still how miserable they are yeah. and how they still have like it's never enough and I think I think that's just part of life like you'll fix something oh, you know like I've kind of cleared my skin now I'm like the wrinkles are bothering yeah, yeah. me like it's never going to be enough. enough we will always judge ourselves so it's like it's an active process that takes work to take that pressure off yourself yeah. it probably will never go away no, probably not. But like working towards it, and I'm really proud of you. You look amazing. Oh, thanks. You I look appreciate incredible. that. Incredible. I mean, I think you guys all look incredible. And it, it's so annoying because it's like I never look at someone else and I'm like, ooh, no, like literally ever think of that. But mm-hmm. then if you look at your own self in the mirror, I look at myself sometimes. I'm like, ugh. Or like heck? you'll notice things about yourself and you'll bring it up to someone else, and they're like, I oh, would have never thought that. All the time. Like we are, we do that to each other. Our harshest critics. Like, oh, I blah blah blah, and, and the other person's like, "What are you talking what? about?" I've literally never noticed that in my life. <laughs> yep, yep. It's fucked up. Mm-hmm. You can use all that energy you're using to like with the negative, and yeah, try to turn it and use it positively. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, so true. Yeah, but it's no easy thing. You know, no. it takes like tons of work. It's yes. easier yeah. said than done. It, this kind of goes back to like imposter syndrome. I would never tell someone what i tell myself or like, even like think it or even think oh, it yeah yeah i mean i'm like oh, i'm a hypocrite like if i like i'm totally. saying all these things you know don't mm-hmm. talk bad about yourself love yourself all these things but it's, i mean i i sometimes like I, it's i really really struggle to do that for myself you know what mm-hmm. i mean and having a good you know a good you know good people around you is also like super important you know what i mean like yeah it is and i've and noticed like for us we've definitely like tried not like these last i mean it hasn't been that long but like th- this last <laughs> week i feel like we've like, tried to like you know, our new thing checking ourselves you know what i mean like, like one mm-hmm. of us said something i think it was me i said something about like and you guys looked at me like hey we're not saying that and then like a few days later curly i think you said something and i was like oh yeah i was like no curly we're we doing need to things. be nicer to ourselves <laughs> yeah that's why that's why i put punishment mindset too mm-hmm. like because you're punishing yourself by speaking such horrible things about you, you too you're you like, know jeez yeah never I've, say that to someone else why no. are you saying it to yourself no like sometimes i would god i've had i mean I've struggled with eating disorders since I was like 17 and I always like to think I'm so past that I'm recovering and I guess I still am but it's like that that part of me like never really goes away and the thoughts still come back and I don't talk about it often um, but I'll have like thoughts where I'm like I need to punish myself yeah. for not doing well enough or like yeah. for eating something bad and yeah. you know so it's this whole like all or nothing mindset right. I feel like right. and I I think that that's something that will probably never go away no. for you. I think it's just literally, yeah. And I mean, it was such a young age when it developed and yeah. But it's like, that doesn't mean that it's like you didn't 
it's not like you didn't like succeed and like fight it. You know what I mean? Right. Of like course. just because you're still dealing with it mm-hmm. and maybe you will for a long time, maybe for the rest of your life, whatever it is. I think that there's this attitude of like, if I haven't completely beat it and those thoughts never enter my mind, then yeah. like it's winning and right. like I'm getting weak again. And right. I don't think that's true at all. And this can be applied for any sort of thing that p- people are dealing with, mental health, physical, whatever it is. That's what I realized is I think I'll be in recovery from it for possibly the rest of my life. Just like someone who has struggled with substance or yeah. alcohol, that you're kind of always recovering from it. Mm-hmm. And it's something you're always fighting. Yeah. And that's, you know, why you have to like continue to support yourself and celebrate the the wins. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's why I've always been like nervous to, to work out and to, I don't, I mean, don't say I'm on a diet. I've tried to just improve the way I'm eating. Yeah. Um, not like I don't calorie count. I don't get obsessed with things because that's never gone well for me in the past. Um, but yeah, just like trying to to take it as slow as I can and put the mental health above everything else yeah. and focus on the reasons that I'm doing it. Like, because I got into a habit this year again where I was weighing myself every morning. First thing Ooh. out of bed. Oh. Well, first thing was scroll social media oh, yeah. Yeah. and feel horrible. Like yeah. literally as soon as I open my eyes. Same. Then I'm like, why am I doing this? And then I would go get on the scale. <laughs> Great way to start. Oh the my day. gosh. <laughs> Feel like shit because everyone on yep. social media is hotter than me. Let me get on the scale yes. real quick. <laughs> and put the cherry on top. Literally. So now Dude, I'm like, no. maybe maybe scale once a week, once every couple of weeks. But I like don't the everyday scale. thing. Good for you. My therapist would probably be mad that I have one. But then when I my go to the therapist. doctor and I see the number, I get like oh, yeah. real fucking weird. And I have never done that in my life. And now I'm like, okay. It's so normal, dude. Yeah. It's being in this fucked up society totally. world and the pressures, you know. Think about the days where they didn't even have scales. They didn't know what a pound was. They're like, we just <laughs> just exist. We're bodies. Yeah. Yep. Just bodies. And we're all naked all the time. Let's Imagine bring, being all naked all the time. I'm let's bring it back. What if we were just naked all the time? Ugh. Oh, God, I would want to just. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no that's not. Yeah, no. No one needs to see me. <laughs> All right. Well, that is that was it Thanks for my for sharing. Ins and outs. I like those. Those are good. You're welcome. Thank you. I think those are some really good things to work towards. And if hey, you it's an if you slip thing. up and it goes bad for a few weeks, that's okay too. Yeah. You yeah, know, I'm not gonna yeah. hit this list perfectly. None of us are. No. It's about trying. It's about you know? trying. That's why I don't like the resolutions. I'm Even, this is completely done, you know? Yeah, totally. It's like a it's a working towards it. Even if it's like it's my goals. Even if you don't even get to start working on one of them just the fact that you're like consciously thinking about it and have the desire yeah you know yep yep how are you gonna like remember you gonna you guys have like I reminders made notes in my app i'm like maybe i'll just like revert to these just like double check it because i think the hardest one for me is going to be not feeling guilty about everything that comes so, from other things though yeah oh i know it's all from my childhood too which I've learned Everything through therapy. Everything stems from your childhood. Yeah. Yep. Therapy. That's go why therapy. when people are like, no, I don't need therapy. It's been, it was so long ago and it happened to me. I'm over it. I'm like, okay. Oh, I did that too. Even with my new It'll therapist, I was you, like, okay. you know, I don't know how much we need to talk about my childhood. It was so long ago and like, it doesn't really matter anymore. I've already spent time talking about it. And she was like, dude, <laughs> we're never going to get through the shit that's going on now because it all goes back. Yep. Because I have the imposter syndrome going on too. Mm-hmm. That's a huge part of my childhood. Didn't even connect the dots on that to my therapist. Was mm-hmm. like, here's why. Yep. So it's interesting stuff. But anyway, I'd love to hear your ins and outs. Unless you all, I guess you guys probably all shared them last week. Well, maybe, I mean, I'm sure people haven't watched last week. So yeah, if you haven't already shared, feel free to share below. All right. So as you guys know, we have recently discovered our new favorite thing, which is song Finch. You guys, this is the coolest service. And Song Finch was kind enough to produce a song for the sesh. And I thought we could play, we already played a lot of it. So I'm sure a lot of you already heard it. But let's play a, a little bit of it that we haven't already played. It means the world. The sesh is the place to be. Let's go. Janelle and Kendall be wild in the studio. Uh, uh, Mini Fireplace was a bad idea. <laughs> Mini Fireplace was a bad idea. Was you know, idea. you know. Thank you. So good. We have listened to it so many times and we have actually talked about making like our own little music video to it because it'd be so fun. If we have ever have time, I want to do it. We need to do it because that would be iconic. But anyway, you guys, Song Finch 
is such a cool gift to give someone or a gift to give yourself Mm -hmm. to really show someone that's special to you how much they mean to you. I mean, it's so hard to find good gifts for people these days, but it's the meaningful gifts that people wouldn't expect that I think go the furthest. I agree. Especially with Valentine's Day coming up. Forget the teddy bears. Forget the chocolate. Dude, forget the flowers. It's a gift of a memory that they'll never forget. Yeah, it's so unique. You can tell them all these things about your relationship with that person or, you know, inside jokes, special stories, and they'll make it into this amazing song and they're fast with it. They're very fast. It's crazy. Yeah, it blew my mind. I felt it's so easy to do. All you do is like it's a four step little process. Um, You just tell them about what the song is for. Yep. Provide some personal details and then let them know the type of song you want. Because there's tons of different ones. It's like there's rap, there's rock. You mm-hmm. can really customize it. Um, and then you can pick your favorite artist from there or they can just assign one to you. And um, what's really cool about it, too, is you don't just get what you get. They'll work with you yeah. until you're happy with it. They guarantee that you'll love your song or they'll, they'll work with you until you do and yep. they stand by their community of talented artists and every original song they create they've created over 300,000 of them so cool. it's so cool so yeah Valentine's Day is definitely coming up that's a great Valentine's Day gift totally unique forget the chocolates the roses all that bullshit you know you want something that's gonna last forever flowers die saying. chocolate gets eaten that's what I'm saying they can play this on their Spotify every day and if they want that's cool because they have special add-ons um, like a yes. final record of your song one of a kind art crafted okay. from your lyrics, or of course, you can add your song to streaming services. That you That's can, so cool. Like, okay, how funny would it be to have a song made, put it on Spotify, and then you're in the car with someone, and then you just are like, oh, let me play this new song from Spotify, and it's totally about them, and film their reaction yes. to it. You'll have it's so special. It's so I just love it. I want to do it for more people in my life. I love it. And like I mentioned. They have an option to have it on Spotify. And for a limited time, they're offering our listeners the opportunity to upload their song on Spotify for free. So you can listen to your new favorite song anywhere you go. All you got to do to get started is go to songfinch.com slash sesh and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add the Spotify streaming for your original song for free. That's a $50 value. And this offer is only available for our listeners at our special URL, which is songfinch.com slash sesh. At songfinch.com slash sesh. Don't wait. Get started now. Things are coming up. Graduations, birthdays, all the things. Plan ahead. Who doesn't love the good things in life? And even though I enjoy a little luxury here and there, it doesn't mean that I want to spend the money for it. And that is until I discovered Quince. Now, I have made it a mission this year to invest in quality over quantity. So Quince has become my go-to for luxury essentials at affordable prices. I absolutely love Quince, you guys. I have so many Quince pieces now. I'm constantly shopping on their website. Quince offers a range of high-quality items at prices within reach, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from 50 bucks, washable silk tops and dresses, organic cotton sweaters, and 14-karat gold jewelry. I have a few of their jewelry pieces now, and I love them. They've lasted so long, super high quality and great designs. And the best part of it all is Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes those savings on to us. And what I also love about Quince is they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. So I just love that. My latest purchase from Quince was a bag. It is amazing. I just brought it on my trip to Arizona with me. It's such good quality. I got so many compliments on it. I also love their cashmere sweaters. They're just such good quality. And I like that they have a lot of everyday staples, like things that you can wear with multiple outfits. So give yourself the luxury you deserve with Quince. Go to quince.com slash sesh for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That is unbelievable. Again, that's quince spelled Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash sesh to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Once again, that's quince.com slash sesh. All right, so on the menu for today's episode, we have a bunch of topics to go over. First, we have some spicy topics. Spicy! We're going to be talking about the Ace family. Oh, boy. Who is getting divorced. Pretty insane. But, like, we all saw it coming, right? Kind of. Like, I'm not surprised, but I'm also a little surprised. I agree. Are you? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk more about that. 
We're also going to talk about Daisy Marquez. 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 Thank you. Marquez. The struggle is real. <laughs> but yeah, I had never heard of her. And she admitted to faking a disease. What is up with people faking diseases? Dude, it's like it, ne- it never ends. We hear about something like this every two months or so. Mm-hmm, Crazy. Much. So we'll talk about that. And then we also have some CSI. We're going to be talking about a YouTuber who was recently arrested for taking his prank too far. Way too far. Shocker. Pranker goes across the line once again. A shitty prank. Literally a shitty prank. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Lisa Vanderpump and her hubby Ken. They're being sued. Yikes. Yeah. So we'll get into all of that. But let's start with the Ace Fam. What a Ace Family. Ace Family. Ace Family. So they're not like, I haven't, I haven't like kept up with anything they're Same. doing. I've heard they're like pretty active or Austin is on Snapchat. All, Snapchat's yes. become, Snapchat has become the big thing, it's right? It's huge. And like people are making a lot of money on Snapchat. More money huh? than YouTube. Really? Yes. Yeah. That's what I've that's heard. Insane. Snapchat is huge. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. It was it's always crazy. really weird to me because like, I like, it's weird that they go on, that they go on Snapchat. Like I never thought. Like to follow creators yeah. on Snapchat. Like, yeah, you're on Snapchat. Yeah, I have a Snapchat show that like someone else produces. But yeah, snappy chatty. And also, um, what's it? Kick. Okay, oh, that other kicks back. Or what is it called? No, it is called. Kick. It's called Kick, but it's not like the th- Kick you're thinking of. It's. Uh, oh, I was thinking kick. of Keek. Remember Keek for oh, yeah, a yeah. long time ago? Keek. There was Keek. Yeah. No, this is Kick. It's like oh, K-I-K. is that the the live streaming one? I, I think so. it's like a I think it's kind of like YouTube. It kinda. used to be if it's the same one I'm thinking about. It used to be a um encrypted uh like um like a WhatsApp kind of like messaging. Oh really? It used to be if it's just, it's yeah yeah that's what I remember. Oh yeah oh yeah you're right connecting the world through chat you're right yeah weird yes there's like communities on there and shit like that. Kick is really sketchy. Like I um was on. I had a kick account when I was really, really young. It's just like not a safe place to be as a kid. Uh, I can imagine most of the internet is yeah. not. How do you well, spell it? K-I-K. K-I-K. Oh. Creepy men on or there. Or is it K-I-C-K? Because there's also the live streaming one. Oh, kind of, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. The live streaming one? Yeah. There oh, is. yeah. People used to go live on there all the time. I've heard that one's really sketchy. Yeah, but then they also have kick social, which kick is... live. No, this is... Yeah, it's K-I-C-K. It's like Twitch and YouTube kind of mix. I yeah. Think. Okay. That's the live streaming I've I've heard. And is. I believe that they're on there a lot. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. They're not on YouTube very often. They're like often. Twitch's bigger, biggest competitor. XQC's on kick. Yeah. Cause they offered like crazy deals to a bunch of Twitch streamers to move over there. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So they've been off of YouTube for a bit though. But yep. they're definitely still online. But recently it has been announced mm-hmm. that the Ace family... Is the Ace divorced family? Mm-hmm. It was January 11th, so last week, mm-hmm. Catherine and Austin announced on Instagram that they were getting divorced, and it was actually Catherine that made the first post. Shall we take a look at the post? She says, "As I start this new year, I will challenge myself in ways that I have never done before. 2024 will be my year of transformative change, and with this taking place." One of the steps in my journey is the difficult decision to leave my marriage. We have mutually agreed to a divorce and will part amicably. amicably. I don't know how to say that word ever. (laughs) Our paths as a couple have shifted and has created challenges that are in in irreconcilable. Thank you. Irreconcilable. Yes. Mm. This decision comes with a heavy heart. As heartbreaking as this is, I also feel liberated. I have spent the past few years prioritizing my children and honoring my commitment to my family. All the while, I seem to lose myself and my own personal happiness. Our main priority will be to stay united as parents and to continue creating a stable, happy, and loving environment for our children. Thank you to all my supporters for giving me a safe space to be able to use my voice and share our love. I love you all so much, and I'm beyond grateful for all of your support we've received from uh, from you throughout all these years as a couple. And Austin, you're my best friend, and that will never change. And then Austy Wasty made a post here. He says... For this new year, I'll be taking a leap of faith. I've de- I've made the hardest decision of my life, the decision to close the book on my marriage. We have mutually agreed to, avor- to divorce, but we'll remain a team when it comes to our kids. We created one of the greatest stories, almost a decade together, so many memories, so many accomplishments, uh, but every book comes to an end, and now we will be writing a new book as separate authors. Wow. Very poetic, hmm. Austin. Yeah. <laughs> we both understand that holding on is believing that there's only a past and letting go is knowing that there's a future and we both are supporting each other's future. 
what is he, a fucking poet now? He's so corny. I feel like someone helped him write this. Of course. This transition is not easy, but we both are making it easy as it can be for our family. We will continue to be the best parents to our kids. Separations are difficult and most times messy, but you'll see how we push through those difficult times as a unit and keep influencing with love and positivity. With that being said, 2024 will be life-changing for me. I will be dedicated to myself, my kids, my health, my body, my mind, my spirit, and God. Thank you to everyone who supported us through the journey and who will continue to support us moving forward. We're going to need even more of your love and strength during this time. It's strange how these were both made almost as new year's resolutions that the divorce was like part of that because it came out and like you mean of when it came out yeah i mean and just the wording of it yeah the new year for this new year yeah they both said for this year near as yeah. i start this new year yeah it's kind of weird my new year's resolution is to get a divorce <laughs> <laughs> and announce it on early january mm-hmm. so okay so they post these on instagram and then Catherine actually went on Snapchat and um, said a little bit more. So let's go ahead and watch that clip here. I lied to myself for a very long time. And I was not happy. And my main priority was always, always, always my kids and my family. Moving forward now, um, things have changed. Because I realize that in order for my kids to truly be happy, I have to be truly happy. Like, truly, truly, truly true. happy inside. And, yeah, I feel like I was lying to myself for a long time, telling myself that I was happy. Because one thing about me and Austin is we never fought. We never argued. No, no, nothing. Like, nothing. Like, we were and still are the bestest friends. And so for me, I thought like, oh, there's nothing wrong. Like there's nothing wrong here. But um, I had been lying to myself and I knew that certain things didn't feel right. I have no fears of nothing or anyone. I still don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm very new to this new dynamic that we're gonna be unfolding and going into. Just because I am happy doesn't mean that I'm not sad at the same time. Um, there's a lot of sadness. I don't think it's really like hit me yet because Austin hasn't moved to his new place yet. There's sadness. Yes, it's like a mourning a death or something. Like it's like mourning. Like I I can truly say that this would be like the first time that I have to mourn something that mm -hmm. has like died in my <laughs> life, like ended in my life. Um, figuratively speaking, of course. I was going to say, he's still alive. And I don't <laughs> want anyone to think that just because I'm happy doesn't mean that I also don't have sadness for the changes and for my children and for the new dynamic. But what I do know is that we're some strong-ass co-parenting dynamic and nothing will change in that sense where, like, they don't see their parents with each other and stuff because we're definitely always going to be together because we have three kids and it's part of life. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty decent statement. I mean, divorce is never easy on the kids and that's that's the biggest concern for sure. It's interesting how she's like, we never fought. We never had any issues, but it's like Austin's a known serial cheater. Like yeah. we know that he cheated on her several times. Well, if you, because it's crazy, the, the difference in comments. So people are commenting on her Instagram, like very supportive of her mm -hmm. being like, she finally woke up. Jacqueline Hill commented, take your time to heal. Uh, we love and stand by you. Congratulations. You can do so much better. You're too good for that cornball. He got weird energy. <laughs> cornball for sure. <laughs> um, but then on his, it's like too much cheating, huh? She going to replace you so easily. Uh, she's got money in the looks. And she got the brain to leave. Notice how in her post, it was just the bottom. And his says, I made the decision. And her says, mutual. This boy yeah. really thinks he's choosing the chapter. She's walking away because how you treated her, Elma. Bye. Yeah, I noticed that too. Of course, he tried to make it sound like this was all me. Because he doesn't want people thinking she left his ass. But it's it very much seems that way. People are ripping him apart, though. Fumbling Catherine is wild literal goddess. She's beautiful. She Catherine is, is yeah. so beautiful. She is gorgeous. I always wondered how she could possibly be with him after being with Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> like oh yeah i forgot they were together dude oh really the hottest man 
in the world. So like, hot. I mean, you went to Austin, McBroom. Ugh. Well, the biggest bummer here is no more Ace Fest. I'm sad. I'm so we were gonna go. I really wanted to go. We really wanted to. You guys remember that um bummer. one of their one of their like incentives for the fest was um going to their wedding. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was like one of the yeah, you got a free ticket to their wedding. And they had that massive wedding. No, I don't No, they, they never had they it. never had it. They were oh, going they didn't? To, no, I they thought had, they did. They had like a big venue. I don't think they had it. I don't I don't remember them ha- hold on. Wait, oh, hold I on. thought they did. I thought they had like a giant over the top wedding. Maybe I'm thinking of some other YouTube couple. I thought they did. Yeah, they um I I just love that they were gonna our official wedding date. We got oh. married. The true yeah, I don't think they ever really had um their wedding. Oh right, because that was like pretty recent. No more Ace Fest. I'm sad. Yeah, that's it. I wanted to go. I mean, maybe they'll still have it. <laughs> Co parenting. That's Ace true. Fest. They say they're still besties, yeah. so it's interesting how she's also getting so much support, which obviously he's like far, far worse than her, but she is definitely not. I mean, the two of them have exploited those kids mm. to an unbelievable level to where I don't really feel bad for either of them. I, I mean, certainly not us. I don't sit there and feel bad for Catherine. Like, didn't she like, wasn't she really rude to her, to his brother's wife or like Shyla? Yeah, or I don't remember all that crap. They had all this drama with the, the brothers and the, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But I mean, he's, he's just like, the mega douche for sure but i'm like with her i'm surprised she's getting so much support with everything she's done as well and, and just the yeah remember the, the thumbnail with like the dog bit yeah our kid yeah. and the kids like crying in the thumb it's yeah. just i just can't stand these fucking people either of them um and i just feel bad for their children sucks yeah i feel bad for their kids the latest thing with austin yeah, this too is insane. yeah dude this guy okay he has been scamming people since the dawn of time mm-hmm. okay he's he has been off accused scam. of off scam mcstammerton <laughs> he scam. has been but y'all got scammed the, y'all remember that clip? in reality like you guys got scammed he's just scamming say. people he's back with the uh social gloves thing remember that whole thing he's not oh, paying God, Bryce Hall. yes he um <laughs> social he's been gloves. accused of not pe- paying people he's been accused of um what what was that brand was they that were website thing remember oh yeah the the Makeup? mystery box no oh. remember the mystery box oh, yes. that we bought yeah we oh, had, like, yeah. Yeah. Wins, and uh we like spent 10 bucks that was a scam and then he was promoting yeah that's yes i remember that and then the juice company the juice too company but that was like loaded with sugar yeah of course uh ace fest mm-hmm. they well, actually they had two ace Best. Do you remember um, Catherine had this uh, skincare Makeup, yep. brand? Oh, I never, I don't know if it ended up, ended up launching or not, but like there was like some huge scandal with that and like I also a scam. Yeah, it was like also kind of scammy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 The two of them are very much, in my opinion, cut from the same cloth. He's he's from the worst side of the cloth. But I would say he's definitely the worst side of the cloth. Yeah. Like there's some shit on his cloth, but it's still bad cloth overall for them both. <laughs> Did you guys see, I remember when they were giving away that Tesla? Yep. Like this was like oh, six yeah. months ago, <laughs> six yep. months ago, and like they got exposed for like hand picking the winner. Yeah, <laughs> it was Dude. like someone they knew or something. Yeah, I don't know. So, but he's not, he's back to scamming now, and yeah. this time trying to scam OnlyFan uh, creators. Yeah, he's like an e pimp. Right, an e pimp. That's exactly what we. That's need. a new thing. There's there's people who self are self proclaimed put it in their bio e pimps now. Wow, Shit. all Which right, doesn't make any. sense sense all right tater tot Mm -hmm. i mean what what does it make sense because it's illegal should be why do you creators online need you to pimp them out because they're connecting them with agencies i mean the point of all of these you know super uh predatory agencies is just to sign anyone with a pulse that could be potentially famous get them when they're early enough to sign something without knowing it and then they're stuck with you for life and they totally screw you over and take everything and hope that one of them makes it big you know yeah yeah so he uh slid into someone's dm laura lux and she's a OnlyFans creator and he said my bad for the random dm are you signed to an agency the hell my bad bad for the random dm (laughs) but i'm typing it hey sorry (laughs) this is like kind of cringe um (laughs) just got done cheating on my wife real quick though 
you, you sign an agency by chance? <laughs> <laughs> like his account, not through like his agency's account. Yep. His Austin McBroom account. And she says, no, I think agencies are predatory scams run by corny men <laughs> who think they can involve themselves in a woman's business. That's right. He says, oh, damn, LOL. Sorry for you feel sorry for you feel that. Oh, damn, LOL. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> like, what? Oh, damn, LOL. Sorry for you feel that. But I do agree the majority of people in the space are nobodies that just outsource a random team. My background is social media, YouTube, Snapchat, all the above, along with having a strong team. So we know how to grow and monetize YouTube channels and Snapchat channels. Snapchat he knows. is now paying. <laughs> he knows. That's right. He, he knows. knows. He knows that song. <laughs> Snapchat is now paying better than YouTube and most don't even know. But again, we offer more than just only fan chatter. <laughs> I can. I just reached out to open a door. No pressure at all, smiley face. <laughs> By the way, we do no contracts. That's how confident we are. LOL. And <laughs> so if you ever, if you're ever unhappy, we do no contract. <laughs> you're more than welcome to walk away. We can't hurt you. Only help. What bullshit? <laughs> Dude, Predatory language. Anything that's like we do no contract. No red flag. Yeah. Why would be Mm-mm. like? Oh well, if that's the case, and yeah, sign me up. Yeah. No, that's just. That's the, God, I've had like so many experiences with shitty agencies and people trying to sign you to things. They're all talk like that. We're different than everyone else. <laughs> it's like only we only do you. well if you do well. Like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. So you're just, you're just, you're doing so it out of the nice, kindness of right? your, yeah. Yeah. God, you're doing you're so nice. Right. They're just so selfless. She goes, when I Google your name, all I see is articles about you losing your house, <laughs> cheating on your wife, and scamming fans who entered some giveaways. So yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that's her. incredible oh, that's did he even respond to that i don't think i mean she hasn't said anything else hasn't or didn't it. release anything yeah it's so crazy he's actually been sending this to quite a bit of people yeah. and what it turns out this is is he's actually being paid yeah. by these agencies to be kind of the foot in the door since he has you know the platform the verification check mark and then you know he'll hand them off to someone else and they're just paying him a chunk of change to, to make the connect to this dude will do anything to get the bag oh yeah dude you gotta respect he has the hustle. no shame money over everything well i'm sure he's like still digging himself out of a hole of social gloves and then that fucking house like who can forget how massive that house was it was two houses that they were com- trying to combine into one remember that we showed the real estate tour where the the layout of the house made no sense. It was yeah. like random walls and two yeah. kitchens, like so weird. They spent so much money on that house, foreclosed. Oh, remember when he was riding around in his fucking jet ski oh, in, the, in pool? the pool and the his neighbor was like getting flooded? <laughs> yeah. Dude, this guy is out of control. <laughs> oh like, yeah. He's just the worst. Complete maniac in my mind. Even Tana said something about it. This was like a few years ago, but yeah, she basically was like you realize Triller offers more money than you, right? Maybe I'd fight with social gloves and my friends get their checks. Mm. Womp, womp, womp. I'm team Bryce on God. Wait, what? What? You're team Bryce? Yeah. No, even, that's even, what, that's no, even what, the paparazzi team Bryce. That's what Tana said. Oh, There's right, a famous right, video right, of her. Right, right. Team Bryce on God. <laughs> on God. <laughs> to fucking win and fuck off the room. I'm team Fuck him. I mean, you know. I'm being sorry about that. No, it might be, but you know, we team Bryce out here. That's right. <laughs> even team the paparazzi Bryce. team Bryce on God. <laughs> Dude, Tana... Tana. Yeah, Tana. Oh, Tana. 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 Yeah, Catherine's, I think, better off without his goofy ass, though. Yeah, for sure. He's goofy as fuck. Yeah. But she's goofy as fuck, too. She's not innocent, dude. She's been, yeah. I mean, the preaching about her kids, but then filming them, putting them in the thumbnails, crying. True. Exploiting their lives from the day they were born. Like, monetizing stuff with them. I mean, that's just. And there's, there's other things about her, too. I'm forgetting over the years, but both of these two, nah. Happy for her. Hope she gets better. I mean, maybe I, I, maybe a lot of it was his influence on her. I kind of have that vibe. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. So it has been absolutely freezing here in Colorado. Over the weekend, we had a low of negative 16 people. It was insane. So we stayed in all weekend and had some amazing HelloFresh picks. Last night, we had this delicious black bean soup. 
And oh my God, I'm a big, I'm a big bean girl. So I was super into it and my daughter loved it as well. I have just never had a bad HelloFresh meal. I can truly say that. We look forward to our HelloFresh every week and getting to pick our favorites or pick the options for the week is always such a challenge for us. Josh and I literally argue over what we're going to get. And now we've come up with a solution where we each get a pick two every week and it's working well. Now, if you are not using HelloFresh, I'm telling you, you're missing out. And now is the time because maybe your New Year's resolution is to save money or eat better or stress less. And HelloFresh can hit all of those for you. You can say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes at prices that you'll like delivered right to your door. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned, making it super easy. It comes right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. There were so many times where we would want to make a certain recipe and we'd have to buy something and it only called for a small amount of that thing and then the rest of it would just go to waste if we didn't use it in time. So I love that it only sends us what we need and we have cut back on food waste majorly. And they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life, baby. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Now that's worth waking up early for. So go to HelloFresh.com slash sash free and use code sash free for free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash sash free with code sash free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, let's talk about Daisy Marquez. Daisy. Oh, I actually had never heard of her before. I have never heard of her, and I'm I'm a bit confused on this whole situation if you guys want to help break this down for me. So she's a makeup fashion influencer, and she recently started a podcast called Daisy Diaries. Now, how this all started is back in 2018, Daisy's fans started noticing that she hadn't posted in a few days, which was, I guess, really weird for her. No, it looks like she's been on for quite a while. Her oldest video is seven years. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's been on. Um, I've I found her a long time ago, probably back in like twenty sixteen, oh, really? twenty seventeen. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was the same person that because like I mean I never really like I had a coworker who was really really into her and like watching her videos and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think she's I think she's Mexican. Um, and like in a yeah. lot of her videos, she like she I mean she just like spank like she speaks in Spanglish a lot, which is you know, kind of nice. Yeah. One of her Um, top uh, videos is called his 1.5 million views story time. I'm undocumented and it's talking about DACA. um, But yeah, she's been doing this for for quite a while. So pretty. Her top video is I'm being haunted, not clickbait. Oh shit. Oh, anyways. So like I said, a few years back, fans noticed that she wasn't posting as much and they were kind of worried about her. They were asking like, where is she? And she ended up making a post saying that she's super sick um and had been dealing with some health problems and in that post she had mentioned that she was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia which we were not able to track down that original post but that's how this whole thing started um she said that she was diagnosed which is a very serious serious yeah i don't really know much about it but i it's basically has to do with your red blood cells Mm -hmm. and it's like a disorder yeah having to do with red blood cells so little backstory here science women in stem here we go (laughs) red blood cells contain hemoglobin a protein that carries oxygen and the healthy red blood cells are around they move through small blood vessels to carry the oxygen to all parts of your body and with someone who has sickle sickle cell they the cells are abnormal essentially Mm -hmm. and um they cause the red blood cells to become hard and sticky and kind of like a c-shape farm tool farm tool so the sickle cells Turn to see. They turn into C's because they're malformed, and so you purposely wrote farm tool like this. The farm tool. Yes, to... it's like a yeah. It's like a like a like a shaft. Yes. Right, 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 right. You would know from your farm game. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Yes. <laughs> For the Wait, wheat, actually, I now it. I understand when you <laughs> when you're harvesting your crops. It's it a little hook. Yes, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. That's right. So, um, anyways, these cells end up dying early, which causes a shortage of red blood cells. And so a lot of the symptoms are anemia, swelling of hands and feet, frequent infections, delayed growth, vision problems. And it's a pretty serious disease. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, she basically said that she was diagnosed with this. Um, Now, the only kind of cure for this is a bone marrow or stem cell transplant. It's not super rare, 
but I mean, it's it's not a common illness. And in the video, we're going to watch a clip of it here in a little bit, but she mentions how she thought that having sickle cell was like getting a cold. Yeah. <laughs> and like she didn't oh realize, God. she didn't know that 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 sickle cell disease is a lifelong disease. Yeah. She like, thought it was like a yeah. cold. She She's like, I just thought it was like getting the flu or something. Oh that, my that God. That'll like go away. Yeah. That's one of her like excuses as to why she made this. La- Not her excuse, but that's, that was her thought process. She's like, oh, I just thought it was basically saying I have the common cold. <laughs> no, literally. So the whistle first started to blow when one of her friends called her out on Instagram about lying. She didn't use her, you know, call her out specifically by name, but it all lines up. And this is her friend Salt, Mm -hmm. who goes by Salty Touch. That's with an H. Mm -hmm. And she says, y'all, I literally used to have a friend who used to lie 24-7 and even lied about having sickle cell anemia. And that her reason that she was MIA for a while, but she really got a BBL, Brazilian butt lift, and needed time off to heal. I'm going on a rant on Twitter right now and now thinking about everything while I'm sitting in my Uber on the way home. If you don't know what sickle cell anemia is, people have literally died from it. Yes. If you're in your feeling about me speaking on something that I thought was sick, then you're just as sick. Yeah. Multiple people have tweeted on it. Someone said the fact that Daisy Marquez claimed she went MIA for a bit because she had sickle cell anemia then turned out to be a lie. She actually went and got a Brazilian butt lift and needed time off to fully heal heal before bouncing back to social media that's so strange because if if you needed time off of social media and you didn't want to tell people why there's like a million other reasons you could have come up with <laughs> right i have personal things going on in my life i am something that's not as um you don't have to commit to yeah, for the rest of your life yeah and um so serious it's just such a strange thing to be like all right let me come up with a disease right so now she starts her podcast the daisy mm-hmm. diaries one of her first episodes. Episode two, right? Episode two. She is about big. her coming clean that she made this whole thing up. I think that's that very it was all interesting that she decides to make this as her second episode because she knew that was going to bring in so Absolutely. many people for sure. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'll clickbait my own drama. And also, how weird is it that she like is saying this like so many years later? You know, yeah. You know, like, yeah. People have forgotten about it. I don't know. Like she stopped talking about it. So I like, mean, you know what I mean, it's not that weird. It's very calculated. I think she knew that that 100%. was going to give her a big boost. You know, she's. It's one of those things where it's like, any any attention is good attention, yeah. good or bad. Oh and, uh, yeah, there's actually a clip here. We'll go ahead and watch that. She turned the comments off too. <laughs> oh yeah, all of her of comments. Of course she did. Yeah. Oh, matching pajamas. And oh. it looks like cozy as fuck. That set. She kind of looks like Kylie Jenner. Totally. Yeah. I'm going to be completely vulnerable and honest right now. So we're going to start off from the very beginning. So this took place in 2018. It was, it kind of died down. Then it got brought back up recently. And like it, this actually all started in 2018. So in 2018, I got a BBL. Wait, is this your first time admitting it? Yes. It's my first time addressing it. I never denied it. I just never addressed it. So you never said you did it. You never said you did. Yeah. But you're literally saying on here. like Yes. You- I got a BBL in 2018. Okay. I got the surgery and obviously like for the people that have gotten surgery, they ask you questions beforehand, like about your health and stuff. And mm-hmm. I remember them asking, you know, are you anemic? And I said, yes, I have always been anemic my entire life growing up. When I tell you, I did not think about how difficult the aftermath was going to be. I went into it so naively, like just thinking like, oh, it's a whatever surgery. You're going to come out with it. It was my first surgery ever, by the way. It was my first surgery ever. And I was so young and I was just so naive that I didn't even think about the aftermath. And by the aftermath, I mean like you, you can't even sit on your butt. You can't get up. You're laying on your stomach, like all these things. And at the time, when I'm at the beginning of my career, I'm posting twice on my makeup channel. And then I'm, I had a vlog channel as well. I was posting like vlogs on there. And I was just like super, so super, you had super, no idea at all. No, I, usually people before they get surgery, they pre-film a exactly. bunch. Exactly. So I didn't, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about it. I literally just went in, got the surgery. And I remember getting out the surgery and it literally felt like I got ran over by a trailer. The third day, finally when the third, by the third days when I started to feel normal, like not on like heavy drugs. And this is where this idea or light bulb popped up in my head. So right Real after smart. I got <laughs> surgery, light bulb. Um, the nurse, I remember waking up and this nurse came and she's like, hi, honey, like, you know, we're just monitoring you. Like you did lose a lot of blood. Like we just want to make sure that you're good. Like she's just like talking to me and she's like, so how long have you been anemic for? And I was like, oh, like since I can remember. And she's like, oh, she's like, you probably have sickle cell. <laughs> and she just said it just like that. Dude, that is the first time ever, ever in my entire life that I have ever even heard that word, right? And I just remember she said that and I was like, yeah, yeah, like whatever. I didn't even pay much attention to it. I just remember she said that. 
I remember looking okay, at my DMs and like messages, people being like, oh, like, where are you? Where have you been? Like, I hadn't posted. I don't all- even believe that. I mean, maybe. I guess there's some bad nurses out there. But what kind of medical professional would just be like, yeah, you probably have sickle cells. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? And in passing. You maybe know what she mean? said something like you should be tested for sickle cell or something. But I, I doubt she said you probably have this. I yeah. don't know, man. Health professionals. I mean, most true. of them are amazing. Okay, but there are some that are like no it's true very sketch that really could have happened i wouldn't honestly wouldn't really surprise but with me. how much she lies i feel true. like maybe I don't that know. was also what you're okay you twist. hear you hear sickle cell disease for the first time in your life you're like that's oh, yeah. the disease i have yeah mm-hmm. and i'm gonna go tell everyone, everyone on the internet yeah she Just, probably didn't like look it up uh, well she clearly <laughs> sorry did. guys um i had um i got sickle cell i got sickle celled <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I think it's so dumb. It's and also, so it's dumb. a lifelong, it's a lifelong yes. disease. Like, you're born with it. It's a genetic right. disease. It's not something someone just mentions to you and you're like, oh, yeah, I got this now. <laughs> yeah. Social media for those three days and, and then I go into full panic mode. I'm like, okay. holy fuck. I start freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, like, what am I going to tell my fans? Like, I had no content pre film. Like, I go into full panic mode and i remember at the time it was just my mom and my ex there with me and they didn't know what to do and i was just kind of like in a frenzy and i'm like oh i'm just gonna say that i had sickle cell genius (laughs) out of the three of you no one can come up with a better excuse than sickle cell god say anything else be like my grandma died would be better than that literally like say i'm having a mental health thing or like i just want time off or be honest and tell people you got a bbl yeah, you could have done that. Yeah. Or you just don't say anything. I decided to take a break. Yeah, it was only three people days. People would have moved on. So she's clearly downplaying the entire thing. And people have been calling her out for this for six years. A lot of people already knew about it. Yeah. Well, but she's clearly drawing a lot more attention to it now. Yeah. She's like, good time with the new podcast. Yeah. Bring in the viewers. Honestly, smart business move, lady. Is it though? <laughs> I don't know. Is man. it though? Because people are not very forgiving about those who fake illnesses. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Something as serious as sickle cell. Yeah. Yep. At least she didn't make a GoFundMe. Oh. Yeah. Mm. True that. <laughs> or speak at an event for yeah. that. Uh-huh. Like Maddie Roos. So remember her? Oh, yeah. How can you forget Maddie Roos? Yeah. She did like in one of in, in the podcast because I ended up listening to the whole episode. Like it was actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, She mentions that like you know, she said it this one time. She didn't really say it again. But there's like old tweets from 2018 in August where she was like, after two weeks of being sick and not going to the doctor, they told me I have an infection in my throat that spread to my tonsils, gums, and ears, just in case anyone was wondering. Oh. And then somebody said, damn, you slay getting sick. And then she said, <laughs> oh, you stay getting sick. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that is pretty brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Whoops, sorry. I have a really weak immune system and also my sickle cell anemia makes it worse. Sound face. face. Oh my god. Girl. Uh... Dude, what is wrong with you? Like no conscience at all. No. <laughs> my sickle cell anemia. She's like the nurse diagnosed me. <laughs> Fuck. She's like, hey, you anemic? Yeah. Sickle cell. Okay, good night. Enjoy your BBL. <laughs> You know how like how common anemia is, like being anemic is very common. like everyone's an, like not yeah. everyone, but like it's such a common it's thing. It's so yes. common. Yes. Okay, her apology though. All right, let's let's check out the apology. I don't remember how much time went by. Like months went by, and no, and everybody forgot about it. Everybody forgot about it. I was like, okay, like you know, like I, in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, like I got away with that lie, but then I felt guilty, and I was like, fuck, like I feel bad for like you know that I lied to my fans. <laughs> <laughs> to the fans and to the people that actually watch that video and believe my life. Really I'm, funny. Genuinely, I'm sorry. Genuinely sorry. Sorry from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, I wish I could take it back, but also like that mistake really has changed me and for the better. Mm-hmm. I have learned so much and I've grown from that mistake. And it took me a long time to apologize to myself, especially. It's um, not really a mistake. Even, like, I hate when I people look back use at that the version of me and I feel bad for her because she was just like so this. broken and yeah. just you know like you made scared and insecure mm-hmm. and now if i were to come out with the surgery i don't care to come out and talk about it i'm after that that really taught me to just not lie like it's just so much easier to not lie that's why after that i made myself a promise to just not lie be open and honest about everything that's easier not to fuck about my breast <laughs> augmentation my chin lipo just like it's just better to be honest and yeah. i really did learn my lesson and i'm not mad that it came out because i did want to hold myself accountable and i am glad that i'm addressing it now at mm-hmm. this my podcast version and at this time of my life and Whew, that, I, that took a lot. I bet. That took a lot. Do you feel better? Like, I feel how do you so feel much better. At first, I was shaking, but I feel so at peace. 
<laughs> <laughs> Until the internet is like, uh, uh-uh. uh uh-uh. This is not just a mistake. We learn a little life lesson. <laughs> oh, my the God. The chick that she's telling to you is kind of like, you can tell she, you don't know what she's, like, she doesn't know what to say. She does challenge her a little bit. Yeah. Like, she was like, I think at one point she was like, so, like, why? <laughs> like, yeah. Why? And yeah. she's like, well, like, you know. Because the nurse said so. Yeah. That's it. That's, fucking That's all why. you need. That's all you need. A doctor? No, it's a nurse. Mm-hmm. You just need to take the nurse's word for it. Yep. You probably have it. So I have it now. <laughs> My new identity. It's like um, WebMD. Again, I don't doubt that that could have been said to her, but yeah. I feel like she is once again manipulating the words that were used. Probably. I, I would guess that they probably said, maybe you should be tested for this. Yeah. Probably. Not just like, oh, you probably have this. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, okay, I know there's bad nurses out there, but I think the vast majority majority would not just say, yeah, you probably have something. Like, what? Right. And then after, like, after that little clip, she continues, go, like, she kind of just rambles on and on about it. She kind of gives the excuse of being a people pleaser and mm-hmm. wanting to, like, make oh, sure I don't, I, you. right, no, literally. <laughs> she's like, so she's like, I'm just, she's like, I just, you know, I just, like, want to make sure, like, my fans are happy and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, it's the yeah. fans fault. They put so much pressure on her. She had to she lie. Had to. Yeah, she had to lie. Oh She's just a people God. pleaser. Or she Googled like it, anemic or diseases to do like, if you have yeah, anemia or, maybe. or anemic or whatnot. <laughs> yeah, the whole nursing could have been a complete lie. That's true. Who knows? Who knows? All she needed was a juicy steak. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For like the iron levels or yeah, something? Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> juicy steak. Well, Daisy has deleted pretty much everything around this time, including posts where she said she's working out and eating healthy, but it was all just the BBL, as one of you put in here, a big blatant lie. Who put that in there? Who wrote that? <laughs> Peter Kelly. That is Kelly. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> genius. Love that. A BBL, baby. It was a big blatant lie. It was a BBL. That. She said it wasn't like as popular back then, so she, like, she could not, like, never have said anything, and now it's more popular, so she doesn't mind sharing and now she's well, open about her sh- you don't have to like no of course but not. also but she was kind of taking it in the direction of like i'm working so hard on my body mm-hmm. and like yeah i'm posting like recipes and i'm like gotcha being in this health nut now when in reality it was just like filming squats surgery. yeah yeah and it was all surgery <laughs> and it's like yeah i get it but also like you're not being transparent to your fans like and this is what yeah i, don't I know. see what you mean that's the content she's making i understand what you're saying yeah yeah but still it's her right to to not disclose something like but that. But don't lie. But don't make up a disease to cover it. Just say you some time off. Yeah. Or say, I got the flu. Millions. I was sick for two seriously, weeks. Like, like the, you thought yeah. you were doing. Yeah. God, she was just shy of COVID. She could have used that. Damn it. <laughs> two years short. <laughs> just like posted an Instagram story with like a message. Saying, yeah. God. It was only three days. It was yeah. Only, yeah. It was only three days. Yeah. Well, who's going to fake an illness in 2024? Ooh, should we, should we do? Um, happens all the time now. Predictions? Can we do some yes. predictions? I am not. No, I am not making guesses about this. <laughs> I do not want that heat. But I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, if it's not an influencer, it'll be someone. God, the amount of people with fake cancer. like oh, Austin's next disease so is crazy. dropping. Austin? Yeah. McBroom? McBroom. Oh. No, I don't know. No, I'm kidding. I'm I'm, I'm just. Maybe. No, maybe. You I'm never sure know with that motherfucker. I'm sure we'll have some this year of. I mean, maybe maybe it's not influencers. Maybe it's just randos. It would be fun to make like a bracket for the year of what we think like would guessing. happen. That would be mm-hmm. really fun. I feel like we could get in ourselves in some yeah. trouble. Also, yeah. n- none of us are psychic, so. Yeah. No. That would be really fun, though. That in a world fun. where We're nothing all... mattered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we yeah, just, we'll just like... make our own privately. Okay. I got some ideas. Like a bingo card. Yeah. Do you ever want to just escape? your everyday life get lost in a steamy fantasy world with hundreds of sexy stories on dipsy designed to turn you on whatever your fantasy is dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short sexy audio stories designed by women for women and they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters you can discover stories about second chance romances adventurous vacation flings and hot and heavy hookups. And there's a growing library of fantasy series with vampires, Greek gods, and fairy smut to explore the bounds of your pleasure. And of course, new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And not only do they have sexy stories to listen to, they also have soothing sleep stories and wellness sessions and even sexy written stories to read. 
I love Dipsy. They're super inclusive. Their app is really user friendly. I just can't say enough good things. So let Dipsy be your go to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind. Or my personal favorite, heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. I'm telling you guys, you have nothing to lose. A full month of free stories. Can't beat that. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. Lisa Vanderpump and her hubby. Oh, yes. And Todd. They're being sued. Ah. Now, Kendall doesn't watch <laughs> Vanderpump Rules. Last episode, I talked about how I started Vanderpump Rules and now I'm getting into it. I'm on season two right now. I'm like halfway through. However, I have watched all of Real Housewives of uh, Beverly Hills. So, so I'm very familiar Lisa with Lisa and, and Ken. Okay, yeah. Uh, right, and right. I, I understand their like restaurant business and all of that. And I did watch the reunion and the, I know the whole scandal. Tom, I know all Shit's about that. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but anyways, these two are being sued. Okay. Big Not shocker. Good. So, uh, January 11th, a lawsuit was filed against Lisa and her husband, Ken, by two of their former bartenders that worked at their restaurant, Tom Tom. Um, unrelated so, to the Toms. It's not. <laughs> that's so interesting. No, it is related to the Toms. Cause it's, it's also run by Tom Schwartz and yeah, Tom, Tom Sandoval. Sandoval. They just oh. weren't included. But in the it. name has nothing to do no, with the two of them. That's why it's named that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, Curly just said that. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought I didn't. Can you even watch? But maybe Did you watch the show? No. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> on the show, they explain that they named it after the two of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. you just know because they started it. Yeah. They, those two are the ones that started the restaurant. Like, but maybe that's not why it's called that. I'm uh, going to do some looking. I'm quite sure that's why. Because yeah. I thought it was Tom's. called something in Schwartz. Or is that their other? Is that they their? Have, that's uh, Sandy and Schwartz. And, uh, their Lisa is not involved in that restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Sandy and Schwartz is is Tom Schwartz and Tom Sandoval. And Sandoval's like their own. They're like the uh, yeah. They're like little two oh, little yep. peas in a pod. Reddit says the restaurant was named after them. Yeah. It yeah. definitely is their brand. That's why it's named Tom Tom. Yeah. Tom Tom. Interesting. And that's also like the GPS navigator back in the day. Is really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Tom Tom. Yeah. Tom Tom is a. I remember that. <laughs> I just know Tom Tom from Thirteen Going on Thirty. Never seen it. Remember Sid? The mean girl's named Tom Tom. Oh yes, okay. I knew I've heard the name before. Really, I don't remember that. Isn't that the one yeah. where they like switch lives? No, she like wishes herself to be thirty when she's thirteen, and then she so she's like a thirteen year old and oh, thirty year old's okay. body. Dude, that is one of my favorite movies of all Me time. Me too. Classic. Oh, Wait, what's yeah. the one where they you? switch lives? That's Freaky Friday, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very Make different good choices. That's Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. Aren't those who's in who's in thirteen going on thirty? Uh. Jennifer Garner. See, in my opinion, and Mark Ruffalo, they're my all the same. <laughs> they're all the same. They could not look more different. Yes, to be honest, it's like the same thing as that Michael one dude Sarah, in Juno and the other. Guy. Michael, Sarah, and Andy Sandberg. Those are the same. Kate, people. you Lindsay live Lohan. on a different planet. No, I swear to God, those two look so similar. Speaking to me. of Lindsay, though, I showed Holly Parent Trap Aww, when we were on our little cute. trip. Oh my God, she was like favorites. so into it. I saw a TikTok of like a real so life much. parent Same. trap where it was like these twin girls and their parents were getting remarried again. It was literally like a parent trap in real life. I saw but did they TikTok. separate them where they didn't know about I don't each think other? So, no. But they just like, like made a thing. Like, watching that as a parent now, I was like, what the fuck is this? Uh, they decided yeah. to get divorced and didn't want to see each other again. So they split their twins up and lied. That happens. People do that. People split their kids up and like take custody of one or the other. What the fuck? Yeah, and then lie thing. to them about their existence and be like, oh, your dad died. Yeah. yeah. No, no, <laughs> you had no sibling. I don't know about the lie, but I have definitely heard cases in which people like will split their kids' custody. What like so and so will live with their mom. Parent Trap's one of my whatever. favorite movies, but it's same. pretty whack, the storyline. They the just happen to go to the thing? same camp and then instead right. of confronting their parents, be like, fuck you, we found out about right. each other. They're like, let's get back together. Let's switch them and like, they're never mad at them for all the years that they missed out on their other parent and sibling. Well, didn't like the court decide that? Whatever, no, I don't, I don't know. They never explain it in the movie. They're just like, we never wanted to see each other again because we had a bad divorce and someone threw a hair dryer at the other. So he's hot in that movie. What's the name again? Oh, oh, Dennis. Yeah. Dennis he's, that is like the hottest moment ever. Like if there's one man in time, oh, Dennis yeah. in he's that totally movie, hot. riding on the fucking horse yes. at the vineyard. Yes. Oh, my favorite part. So sexy. I have never seen this movie. Oh my oh, god. Wow, you, that movie, really. I think it won awards because it was like pretty crazy <laughs> how they, they filmed this. 
Like, oh yeah, it was just watching one it, Nick. Yeah, Lindsay just Lohan. one Lindsay. Wait, Lindsay doesn't have a twin sister. <laughs> I'm no. kidding. I'm kidding. Like, dude, when kidding, I find kidding. out, when I found that out, I was shattered. I was okay. like, there's not to how. Which I'm like, why did they choose to do that? Why didn't they just like get the Olsen twins or something? So true. So weird. They were Great in movie. rehab during that time. No, they weren't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I think that is one of the best movies ever made. Anyway, that's all I'll say about that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry for the tangent. It's fine. No, I I like that movie too. The ear piercing part freaks me out. Though. Oh, so you have yeah. seen that? I have seen it. I've seen okay. the movie. Dude, the ear piercing part, I would hide behind the couch. It's yeah. me. I, it still I stresses me yeah. out. The apple and they're like, like the right. bottom, with the ice. Even when they're cutting <laughs> the hair and everything. Mm. I don't get why they had to do that. Just the part. music in that movie though. Their little oh, handshake. I used so. to want a butler like, what's his name? Marcus oh, or something. They yes. had like the whole handshake. Da, na, 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 na. Dun, dun, dun. We should do that. that. I don't remember. We that should part. learn it. Yes, I always wanted to learn it. I was I've never so had jealous. anyone else like, do it. I want a butler. <laughs> Martin. Martin. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I need a Martin to do a handshake with. This. This is a remake, right? Yeah. Of, there was an older. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. There's a really old version. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I knew yeah. that. I did. It's still never watched them, but yeah, I did not know that. It's dumb. Anyways, so yes, two employees. It has nothing to do with Tom and Tom, though. It's two other random employees. Um, but they claim that they experienced, quote, rampant violations of California labor laws, harassment and unsafe working conditions, including late paychecks and sewage in the employee break room. Mm, delicious. The employees that filed the complaint were two former bartenders, like we said, and they allege that Tom Tom did not assign them shifts in December of 2022. And they are saying it was um, constructively terminating them. Hmm. One of exactly. the bartenders also claims that Lisa and Ken blacklisted him and allegedly, quote, defamed him to future employees Yikes. or employers. And Lisa has more restaurants, obviously. She's got, how many restaurants does she have? Like, that's a good question. Let me look at that. That chick is busy, man. I give her props. I doubt and she, she does has much another for it. TV show coming out this year. What's that called? It's like, um, here, let me pull it. I watched the trailer of it. She owns 30, bro. 30. 30 restaurants and bars with Ken for That's over 30 crazy. years in the United States and England. The new show is Vanderpump Villa. And it's a docudrama, unscripted. Yes. A docudrama? So it's like going to be a one-time thing? Well, depict the work and life of Vanderpump's uh, hand-selected staff. What? This sounds exact. Oh, and the oh, oh, a French, French estate. estate. Chateau Rosabelle. It's probably going to be really pretty, though. Lisa Vanderpump. Dude, what is her net worth? God, I'll never forget. There was an episode of Beverly Hills where they, they did some type of party or maybe it was just all the time. They had like ponies on their their land and like uh, swans just swimming outside their Damn. house in a little pond. Uh-huh. You guys know the, the restaurant that Vanderpump is? Sir. Sir, you know what it stands for? Sexy, unique restaurant. That is correct. <laughs> Sexy, unique restaurant? Stop. I want to go there. I looked at the ratings the other day just to see what people are saying. It's very mixed. It huh. looks so cool. They're coming out. They're a new restaurant. And I was telling you the other day at the Flamingo. Yes. Oh, in like Vegas. Pinky. Pink, yes. Pinkies, yeah. I believe I heard she's supposed to be on the next season of uh, Beverly Hills. Oh, really? I think she's coming back, Lisa. Did she stop? Was she not, not on it? Yeah, she left for a while. By she had way, a bunch of drama. By the way, her net worth is supposedly $90 million. I'm surprised it's not more. Mm. I need okay, to so watch. she's not returning, I think. Yeah, see, I tried to watch um, Beverly Hills, but... It's too. It's too much. Like you have to. I was confused. Uh, yeah, I like. Mm -hmm. I, I started back from the beginning, but they're so old that it's like yeah. hard to get into it. I feel like it's worth starting around season seven or eight. That's exact. Kayla told me my friend told me to start at season six, and I did, but I was still confused. So then yeah. I just. If you like Real Housewives, that's a good one. I like Potomac. I've heard good Potomac's things about pretty Potomac. interesting to me, but I don't know. A lot of people don't feel that way. I loved Atlanta for the longest time. It's gotten so lame, but anyway, I've heard New York's been really good. I need to watch that. Oh, yeah. Sarah said that's like one of her favorites. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Awkward, though. Yep. I well, wish, I wish I was Lisa Vanderpump. Why? <laughs> I don't know. So I can own restaurants. Have swans in the yard. I mm -hmm. like all the dog rescuing she runs. She does. Yes, she does do good work for dogs, I think. She saves a lot of pups. And she has mini ponies. Yeah. Mini ponies. She has mini ponies on the lot. And geese. Or and swans. swans. Yeah. Not geese. <laughs> She's above the geese. Imagine having swans. 
It's like the scared. bougiest thing you could think of, right? I didn't even know like swans were real. Like I knew they were real, but like, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like you ever seen swans were real? You ever seen a real swan? Like, come on. Yeah, I've been seeing swans. Where have you been seeing swans? In my backyard. The fuck? You ain't seen. I swan- got a pond. Okay, take it easy. <laughs> you do not. Actually, you're right. I don't think I've ever seen a swan. Thank you. They're not real, and all people have them at their weddings and stuff. I've seen Aren't them on like dubs? video. No, no, no. People will have actual Are swans. Aren't swans like geese? What are your thoughts on peacocks? What about them, oh, I love scare me. Oh, do they exist? If, yeah, I saw I, that's the zoo. Okay, you, you know what them? really scares me? Fucking ostriches. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, oh, they're, yeah. Those motherfuckers will end your life. Yeah. Oh, they have a they'll really, poke your eyes out. Mm-hmm. They have a big ugly. claw at the front, and, like, and they'll cut you. My dad has a I peacock. Do think peacocks are sweet. Yeah. Dad, your dad has one. Mm-hmm. That's cool. It's like a yeah, he has a peacocks couple. Dope. Yeah. I don't like them at the zoo, how they're like free. I like that. Yeah. I feel like they are cheap. They I, I like run away from them. They don't them. chase you. I know, but I feel like they're chasing me. <laughs> no, I look like insane when I'm at the zoo. I'm like, ah. Oh, I love, I love peacocks. Yeah, yeah. peacocks are gorge. And yeah, I like it's mostly at them, but... the men, right? That are called only men. Like women. Only the only, only the men the have men. the big. Feathers. That's like the the so vibe in the whole rude. bird world. Mm-hmm. The men are pretty. So fucking rude. It's to attract their mates. All right. Has ever uh, heard? Do you guys know what a peacock sounds like? Have you ever heard a peacock scream? Does it just sound like because they do sound kind of crazy? There's a peacock in one of the books I read. Holly and she always points to it and goes, tweet, tweet. Oh, that's so cute, dude. I've been loving reading to her, it's so fun. She just recognizes so many things Aww. now. She knows rainbows, she's been saying butterfly. She goes, Bubba, oh, it's so cute. She gets so excited. And we read this little book about a baby going to bed. It was actually my book as a kid, so it's like completely destroyed, it's taped up and everything, yeah. but it's one of my favorite books. And every night it talks about how the mommy gives the baby a kiss and she takes the book and gives the baby a kiss. Oh, oh that's so, so cute. cute. That's so, that's so cute. cute. She's such a sweet girl. God, I okay. just love her so much. What is the sound? A peacock. Oh, this is a peacock sound? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Showing dominance. Okay, that's literally what I said. <laughs> Walking. <laughs> Sounds like a baby crying. Dude, that sounds like my cat meatball. <laughs> it does. Courtship ritual. <laughs> this just literally turned into a fucking bird podcast. <laughs> okay, this is so random, but have you guys ever seen giraffes fighting? No. Oh. Dude, Don't like- please, can we just Google giraffes fighting? It is the, like, I thought it was fake. I thought it was AI at really? first. I've never seen this. Male giraffes Fighting. With their neck, they do that. Dude, Thrash this is so nuts. I seriously thought someone AI generated this. I'm like, there's no way I've never seen them fight. Dude, they like smack each other. <laughs> they look I like- guess that makes sense. Their neck is all muscle. It's gotta make the sm- strongest part of their body. See, oh, so yeah, nice. I first saw it on TikTok. Why are there some things in life that I am just now discovering? Oh, there's endless things. But sometimes I'm like, this is another Bernstein bear. <laughs> well, I learned an interesting fact. Did you know in most states in the United States, it is illegal to collect rainwater? Why? The whole thing. Maybe I'll do a presentation on it next week and explain. Because it's wild. And it's true. It's, it's true. It's illegal to collect it? Yep. Well, I've broken the law before. It's sketchy. There's a whole conspiracy around it. It's in like everyone's state. Like you can collect a certain amount legally. I feel like I've heard this before. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I would looked into it. I'll, maybe I'll do a little prezi. At the beginning of next okay, week. Okay, great. Enlighten us. I have more facts, too. I've Thank been you. learning lots of fun facts lately. Thank you for the fun facts. Okay, guys. Always fun hanging out. Always a Wait, pledge. we have one more. Oh, really? The shitty one. This one's so quick. We just oh, need to watch right. this video. Okay. So there's this YouTuber. He's 20 years, 22 years old. Um, He goes by YD. His YouTube name is Yannick or Nike. Don't know. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Um, He, on January 2nd, was arrested. Uh, after he allegedly dumped a b- variety of things, including poo-poo <laughs> on people. Okay. He was on a train in Belgium and it's part of a multi-series YouTube prank. Dude, <laughs> you, the, the, the fucking pranksters are out of control. They are. Let's go ahead and watch uh, the video here. Trigger warning. This is disgusting. Okay. It reminds me of that guy we covered recently that was just walking up to people and decking the fuck out of them. Right. <laughs> Like a literal bucket of shit, you guys. Well, like with a mix of other things. Too. Oh my god. That is. So- <laughs> yeah, there's. It's a whole mixture he made. Ooh, a little soup. Yeah, like. 
beans and beer. Oil. Oil, yeah. That's disgusting. And then he just runs away. With dog feces, beer, oil, water, and leaves. That is so horrendous. That's a biohazard. Do- you're gonna dump dog shit on people it's disgusting Dude, these prankers are out of control so obviously he was arrested and charged with assault and battery uh damage to property using violence what did he think and property was going damage to happen disgusting i don't see he's not even like hitting numbers he has like 500 subscribers like he's not getting what he wants you know what i mean he's viral now well now sick um yeah and apparently multiple complaints were actually filed back in november but as far as we know nothing's been done until obviously hmm. this recent incident do it for the view yeah i guess so so to end off this episode i actually collected my own feces <laughs> did you <laughs> and it's kind of well out. i heard you've been keeping it in your car huh i heard in the episode <laughs> last week you've been keeping your shit in the car in oh the passenger yes seat. i did say that i was like not real shit <laughs> that's where you're storing it up so you can do some pranks that's right Maybe like a monkey throw it out the window as you go yeah Start a whole channel on that. Yeah, I'm just throwing sh- bags of shit out of my fucking window. Who needs bags? Just a handful of shit. That's oh. disgusting. Mm-hmm. Remember the old school prank of like lighting a bag of shit on fire and then leave people it like stomping doorstep. it out? Yeah. Why? I don't know. You like leave it at their idiots. doorstep and then they're like, oh my God, it's on fire. So they stomp it out and then they stomp and poop. That's funny. Brilliant. <laughs> really. So funny. The world is filled with brilliant minds. Okay. Pranking is the root of all evil. That's what we're learning here. <laughs> it's just a prank. Just like how that guy, yeah, punching that dude, just random guy in the street was literally just a prank. Just say sorry. Yeah. yeah, multiple people. Just like that one YouTube, fuck, I forgot his name. Um, He, uh, I don't know, I think he like tries to be Mr. Beast. And he went to Japan and was like on uh, oh, yeah. uh, the subway. God, what's his name? Phidias, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was literally like, breaking the law in Japan, like, to- just being he was so trying to go on the train without, without a paying. ticket yeah and he hid in the bathroom the second time. yeah he was like i'm really sick and then he like was running around faking th- it, it, it's just stupid <laughs> it's just never ending and then yeah oh. he's like oh i'm sorry he was on age three recently actually and he admitted fully that he just tries to be mr beast a lot of people try to be mr beast yeah oh yeah <laughs> Of course. Mr. Beast. All right. Anyone that comes up with anything original on YouTube, there's a million copies of it. Correct. How it goes, right? Well, yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, that is going to be it. We'll be back next week. Yeah. Of course. It's always fun. Love this show. Love back. you guys. Welcome to 2024. Yep. It's going to be a really great year. Time to slay the day every day. That's every right. day is a new slay. <laughs> That's every the day. motto, wow, baby. That is the motto. And we will see you on the next sesh. But until, until then... then Keep it fresh. fresh.